That is not the song I asked for. <laughs> uh, my name is Suhail. I work at Pivotal. I look after the data at Pivotal. Uh, so I'm quite passionate about data. Throughout my career, I've been in, uh, you know, various, I've worked around data in various capacities. So just to give a background of what we are going to talk about today, I'm actually going to, you know, not bore you with the regular slide deck and, you know, go through the presentation. I'm actually going to talk about a real use case, uh, which one of our data scientists did. And actually, the source code is available on GitHub. If you want, we can uh, pass on the link to you. And uh, let's assume I'm a data scientist today, which I always wanted to be. And I'm trying to solve a data problem. And the problem that I'm trying to solve is I need to find out two people whose name sound like Pawan and Peter. And one of those guys is my boss, not making it up. And both of them are working at Pivotal. They know each other directly. And uh, one of them have withdrawn money yesterday within the last 24 hours in an ATM within, 20, within two kilometers of uh, reference latitude and longitude. If you look at this problem, I'm actually trying to solve four problems. Problem one is around text. I'm looking at, I really don't know how to spell Pavan and Pita, but I know how their name sounds like. I, that is the text problem I'm trying to solve, the sound problem. Second is I'm trying to solve the a link analysis problem. They should know each other directly. Third is time series within 24 hours. And the fourth one is geospatial, right? I, like I said, I'm a data scientist today, and uh, my company has a data lake. Uh, and if I were to do it on data lake, um, I would be you know, doing a lot of steps, like 3,000 lines of code. And lucky for me, my organization also has Greenplum. So they have given me access to the Greenplum. Uh, what is Greenplum? Greenplum is a massively parallel processing data platform. Uh, imagine thousands of Postgres databases running in parallel together to solve one problem, right? It's the database which does machine learning, deep learning, graph, time series, et cetera, et cetera, right? Again, back to my problem. Uh, as an option, I can run my green plum on uh, bare metal. I can run it on virtualized platform. I can run it on any uh, public cloud. I can run it on any appliance. And uh, today, I've decided to run it on uh, Kubernetes, right? So how does green plum integrate with Kubernetes? So very simple. Green plum has been uh, you know, kind of integrated with green, uh, Kubernetes uh, some two years ago when uh, you know, it was still in its uh, early stages. And uh, the integration is such that each part of a Kubernetes cluster will run one database instance, which is a self-sufficient database. But again, that one pod will be a subset of a larger cluster. So we'll have multiple pods running in parallel to solve this problem, right? And uh, here is how the, uh, the implementation of Greenplum on Kubernetes look like multiple uh, workers. Each worker is basically a database instance. And again, now, since I'm a data scientist, my organization has already given me access to multiple data platforms. And in this case, like I said, I'm going to use Greenplum. I do have a larger Greenplum warehouse, but for security and compliance reasons, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my own cluster, right? And what we have done is we have created a blueprint for Greenplum on Kubernetes with some additional extensions and libraries. Now, when I'm going to decide on uh, you know, running a database cluster within this uh, Kubernetes platform, uh, the first thing that I need to decide is what kind of storage I need, what kind of SLA I'm signing on, right? Do I need like fastest storage or do I need a cloud-based storage? Do I need a virtualized-based storage? So today, I'm gonna decide on SSD. So what will happen is the, this is the only time I'm going to see a, a text editor or a VI editor. I promise, right? So I've decided to use uh, 
SSD, and here is how I'm going to supply my YAML file, and here is how I'm going to tell Kubernetes what kind of cluster I'm really looking at. How much memory per pod? How much disk per pod, right? This is one step, right? Like I said, I come from the database industry. If I were to create a massively parallel processing data platform before having access to Kubernetes, I'm not joking, I would at least take 24 to 48 hours. It's not the installation part that is taking a long time. It's the configuration, it's the network, it's the VLANs, it's the, you know, getting the access to the OS, all of that is now gone. I don't have to really worry about the network. I don't have to worry about the VLAN overlay. Or everything is pre-configured and pre-networked within the Kubernetes cluster. If you look at it, what I'll do is I'll submit this to my Kubernetes cluster and say, hey, kubectl, apply my YAML file, right? So I'm a data scientist again. I don't like to go on OS. I don't really care about OS. I want someone to take my YAML file and give me a database. That is what I want. And that is what exactly is happening. Within 91 seconds, I will get my massively parallel processing database up and running. 91 seconds. Now, whether it's 91 seconds or 95 seconds, I'm still within minutes. If you were to create a database, again, I'm going back, I'm, uh, it's, it's quite important. If you were to create a database in less than 91 seconds, you will spend actually 91 seconds in verifying the kernel of the OS. How, no matter how great we are, we'll still say, hey, okay, let's do it. Now here, everything is pre-configured, everything is done, right? If you look at here, along with my uh, Green Plum cluster, there are some additional uh, extensions or additional packages that uh, you know, it installed for me. We'll talk about those packages a little bit later. But now, as a data scientist, I love to call myself a data scientist, my cluster is up and running. Now the cluster is up and running, let's load some data. Uh, in the last 10, 15 years, a lot has changed in the data space. New kind of data types, new file formats, new different types of databases have, you know, emerged. So again, like any organization, we have data across the multiple data platforms. So what Greenplum does, it basically gives me an extension, or you, can, you may want to call it like an extensible protocol, which allows me to go to all of these sources without having to ETL it, without having to create a job, without having to create a mapping, and within that mapping, I mean, that gets tough, right? That gets difficult. Now, what PXF does, it basically gives me a parallel access to all the underlying data sources. The performance of PXF, which is Pivotal Extension Framework, can go up to 10 terabytes per hour. Now, what we do in PXF is all my parts, you remember the parts that I used to create my Green Plum cluster? I've got two parts, both the parts will actually be part of this loading process. They will actually go to the uh, you know, sources, whether we are talking about HDFS here, whether we are talking about uh, Hive, or whether it's S3, whether it's Spark, or whether it's relational databases. I have access to all of these data sources through a single connector called PXF. I love my ops team because they created a blueprint for PXF also. You remember those 91 seconds? Within those 91 seconds, I also managed to get my extensive framework installed also. Now, for HA and performance, you will actually see multiple PXF uh, you know, processes running. Uh, I could have used or I could have chosen to go with Kafka. However, the use case that I have today it doesn't really require me to have uh, real-time data. So I'll stick with my static data, which is on S3. I've got additional data, which is on S3. Now, again, we are bringing all of these, uh, you know, all of my, my Kubernetes cluster is running within my uh, on-prem data center. 
I do not have a, an S3 storage. So what I do is I'll actually use Kubernetes and the pods within Kubernetes to give me access to an S3 storage. So we are using a software called MinIO. So what you actually do is you decide on number of pods. You say, here are 20 pods and here are four pods. Within those four pods, go ahead, install this software called MinIO. What MinIO does in this case, it basically creates a, an S3-based compatible storage. All it takes is 30 seconds to create an, my own S3-based storage. But again, I'm a data scientist. I don't really, now I don't really care about you know, the storage aspects of it. Now everything is set up, more or less. Now let's really talk about the problem. The first problem is Pawan and Peter. I don't really know how to spell the name. If you come from the database uh, background, if you ever do a search on a database, database searches are always Boolean. It's yes or no, or sometimes you can do yeah, yeah, right? It's very hard to tell a database engine that how to do a sound X function. And it's very hard to tell a database engine that how many levels of sound depth you can go to. I was actually doing a project in one of uh, you know, South Asian countries wherein uh, we wanted to find out a group of people who are, who are not doing well in their lives in terms of their, you know, how poor, how rich they are. And this country uh, happened to have like quite diverse background. And we are talking about one name, in case, in my, in case of mine, no, my name, Suhail. It can be spelled 20 different ways. So we looked at, for this customer, we looked at like we are doing here, we looked at Solar, Apache Lucene Project, Solar. So what we've done in this case is, in order for a data scientist I don't want a data scientist to go and write a huge, lengthy Java program and then kind of combine all of that together with a static relational data. So what we're actually doing here is we have created an integration between Greenplum, Data Platform, and Solar. Now, if you know SQL and if you do not know Java, you can still write Solar-based Queries. You can still go to a database. What we have actually done is we have given an SQL interface to Solar. Now, here is the source. Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. Again, my extensions. My ops team has also already created an extension for Solar. In this case, if you see, it's called GP Text. That is the pivotal name for Greenplum integration with Solar. Again, here is the source code. You can see, right? I'm using a soundx function here for the Pawan and Peter. I'm just trying to solve my data, uh, the text problem. I'm also using a GP text function. If you look at here, the text search, it actually takes your text search, converts it into a native solar request, and runs in parallel. Now the question is, where is solar running in this case? Solar is running within each pod that has my green plum processor running, right? So Solar and my data platform are running in the same pod. So I don't, I, this is more towards the data affinity and index affinity. Yes, moving on. Uh, I also need to find out they should know each other. So which means I'm actually going to use graph analysis. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have um, you know, done graph, how many of you have actually worked on graph. Uh, quite recently, there was an article published, uh, and in that article, it was written by 2022. Most of the user-facing applications that we have will end up using some sort of graph. Any marketing campaign that you run on uses a lot of graph. Any fraud analytics that you run on uses a lot of graph. Moving on again, here is my source code, and here's how I'm using my graph functionality using Apache Madlib. Apache Madlib is an open source analytical library project which was initiated by Pivotal some 10 years ago, and it's quite extensively used by the Pivotal customers who are using Greenplum. And also, it's available as an extension to, uh, on Postgres. Ah, again. As a data scientist, this is something I don't want to really you know, 
think about, but it happened. One of my pods has died. If you remember, when I created my cluster, I did not choose any mirroring. I said it's a dev, but now it has happened. Again, in this case, whenever a database fails, I can always call my DBA, I can always call my sysadmin and tell him, hey, look, dude, uh, you, know, you need to help me. But here, since I'm running it on Kubernetes, I don't have to do anything. I just have to watch. And actually, what will happen is my cluster will actually go back to the original state, completely in an original state without any human intervention, all managed by Kubernetes in this case. Right. Now, while I was talking this, my manager came in and said, hey, look, you need to increase your data set. Instead of running it like on 100 gigabytes of data, I'm actually going to give you additional uh, 20 terabytes. And uh, can you try to solve this problem with your existing cluster? So what happens is my data platform and Kubernetes are integrated in such a way that I can actually go for an online expansion of my pods. Your database is still functional. Your database is still you know, responding to your request. At the same time, you have uh, an expansion happening from two parts all the way till, if you look at in this case, is all the way till 96 parts. So now I have 96 database instances running across multiple nodes, and they're all running for a single query. This is a massively parallel processing, share nothing architecture that has been used here. All right, moving on. Now I need to find out who has withdrawn more than $200 within the last 24 hours. Greenplum also is a time series database. We can actually do a lot of time series modeling within Greenplum. And uh, here is the source code for time series. If you look at it, I've been flashing the same source code again and again because my source code is just 30 lines. Within 30 lines of source code, I'm doing text analytics. Within 30 lines of source code, I'm doing uh, link analysis. Within th uh, 30 lines of source code, I'm also using a lot of mathematical functions. Right? Moving on. Now, I need to find out two kilometers within the reference location, within the two kilometers of reference, the ATM, right? Again, Greenplum is a geospatial data platform also. I can actually load a lot of uh, uh, latitude and longitude driven data and I also have, we support all the functionalities. If you're looking at LADAR functions, if you're looking at polygon functions and all, all of those functions are actually available out of the box within the platform. Here is my source code for using uh, uh, geospatial. You can actually look at it distance between two points. I'm actually providing the reference latitude and longitude within these two points, all right? Actually, my source code, this is my source code. I've already solved uh, four of my problems, right? Now, the source code you've already seen. As a data scientist, I have two options. Option one is I found the answer. I can take my model, run it in production, and keep on running it. Second option is, okay, I found them. This was one of the requests that came to me. I don't need to keep it in production, move on. Answer given, that's it. You found the two guys, that's it. It's not a recurring problem. It's not a recurring quest, right? So what I can actually do is, if I were to put it in production in real time, we provide an option of Madlib deploy, Again, when you do a Maglib deploy, it runs within uh, one of the parts of Kubernetes. So all the data goes via the Maglib, uh, you know, Maglib deploy. And then you can also integrate with your real-time <coughs> real processes, right? However, I'm not going to put it in production today. I, like I said, I'm done. And what I'm gonna do is all of the work which was run on 128 parts, I'm done, I don't need it, right? I can go actually go back and say, delete all the parts. Now within a day, I managed to load the data, create the cluster, run the machine learning algorithms, do the deep analysis, and finally when my answer is out, I can go ahead and delete it. So think of this context or this whole scenario as a 
a lot of the users these days demand data as a service, analytics as a service. So this is how Kubernetes can actually help users from a, you know, from a running a old model to a new model, to a new way, wherein you can go ahead, deploy a cluster in less than a couple of minutes, load the data from various distinct sources, run your machine learning algorithms, and when your model is out, you provide the model report, right? And if you look at it, here is four weeks of efforts. And actually, when I say four weeks, uh, these are not the makeup numbers. These are the real numbers. Uh, this was actually done by a data scientist. And uh, when I said both Pawan and Peter, Pawan is our data scientist. He works at Pivotal. And uh, Peter runs the entire business. So Pawan said, if I were to do it on a data swamp or a data lake, four weeks, two weeks, of, and three days of uh, loading. But now that I'm done, it's, uh, so I was supposed to finish at 4 p.m. It's 5 p.m. and I'm done, and I'm destroying the cluster. Thank you.